These liquid metal droplets seem to have developed a life of their own. They move all by themselves without electrical or magnetic fields. The droplet movement resembles that of amoebas. Just to show you how striking this resemblance is, let's put amoebas and the droplets side by side. This is the first step in the development of amoeba robots. The metal droplets are just a few millimeters in size and move on a graphite plate immersed in an alkaline electrolyte. This chemical reaction is one of the very few, if not the only one, that is able to imitate the peculiar locomotion found in amoebas. The shiny metal drops consist of a liquid metal known as gallistan, a mixture of gallium, indium and tin. The drops are placed on a substrate of pure graphite, immersed in an aqueous electrolyte. What fuels their movement is finely dispersed aluminium on the droplet surface. And here is a short overview how the experiment works. A droplet of gallistan is infused with a tiny aluminium flake in a petri dish containing electrolyte. The gallium weakens the aluminium and it starts to react with the alkaline electrolyte. Hydrogen gas is released in tiny bubbles. When the flake is broken down into microscopic pieces, the aluminium-infused gallistan droplet is pipetted onto a pure graphite substrate immersed in alkaline electrolyte. The aluminium content decides the droplet behavior. High aluminium content seems to inhibit the expression of pseudopodial protrusions. while trace amounts cause increased activity and motility. The aluminium changes the surface tension of the droplets. While the flow of electrons from the metal oxides on the surface of the droplet to the graphite substrate cause vortices and pressure gradients on the inside of the droplet. The variations of the surface tension create a channel that guides the turbulence in the liquid metal on the inside of the droplet. The surface tension variations causing locomotion resemble indeed the process found in living Lobo's amoebae. Where the function of the ectoplasm and the ectoplasmatic contraction tube is based on similar surface tension effects. This experiment is absolutely fascinating and lets us dream of amoeboid robots. How cool would it be to build a robot on the basis of an amoeba, a robot that attaches to surfaces and crawls by flowing like a liquid? Humanity could use it for mining, fighting pathogens, cleaning up the environment, mine sweeping or maybe even to repair machines and equipment. Of course, the road to these amoeba nanorobots is still painstakingly long, but the first step has been made. Please stay tuned for another video with the precise instructions on how to perform this experiment. Thank you so much for watching. Let's dig up some more dirt and let's stay curious.